Hey guys, Crypto Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. So I recently presented a very long review on the channel of this uh, Newtonian telescope, 150 millimeters aperture and with the coma corrector, 580 millimeters focal length for a focal ratio of f3.8 with this telescope presenting a lot of advantages compared to something cheaper like the Skywatchers Quattro 150p that is standing next to it. In particular, it can be used out of the box uh, compared to a lot of enhancements needed with the uh, Skywatcher before it's really usable. And in particular, on the Skywatcher, internal reflections were a huge issue leading to, uh, to weird gradients in image that are very abrupt and that were almost impossible to process out. And overall, I think my v review was very positive despite some drawbacks, like it arrived with some uh, paint flakes on the premier mirror, which was easy to clean off, but it's still uh, a problem. And also it arrived with pinched optics on the primary mirror, which is something very easy to fix as well, but it does require removing the primary mirror, loosening some clips, and then putting it back in. And that can be an issue for a lot of beginners, even though for someone experienced like myself, more or less, it's a five minutes operation. But one of the things I had noted were uh, some uh, star spikes, not quite spikes, spikes, but like flares to the side of the star, which I thought at the time was due to uh, mirror clips being used. This is a very classic symptom on uh, Newtonian telescopes where your, your primary mirror at the back of the telescope is held in place by some tiny clips that intrude upon the mirror surface and because of that they will cause some diffraction artifacts that show up kind of as flares around bright stars on the image. Except that there was one direction of the frame flares that I had pointed out that was that seemed a bit more severe than the rest of the flares. So I wanted to be sure what is going on and because of that I decided to add what is called a mirror mask and basically a primary mirror mask to be precise and that is basically a ring uh, that is going to be placed in front of the primary mirror and it will be just large enough that it hides the clips. Obviously, this comes with a drawback. It closes a little bit of the aperture of the telescope, so the telescope gathers less light, which means slightly less uh, signal to noise ratio for the same amount of exposure time. But the big advantage is that in theory, those flares around bright stars, this should be a thing of the past once you have your primary mirror mask in place. And so I went ahead and I used uh, a, a free tool, CAD tool to, uh, to design my mirror mask. I 3D printed it and I installed it. So while it is somewhat difficult to see there are no mirror clip shapes now on the primary mirror it's just a very round kind of surface of course that primary mirror that i designed and 3d printed it's available for free on thingiverse if you have your own 3d printer or you want to ask a 3d printing uh, company to print it for you that's fairly cheap you can do so using the design i'll have the link down in the description and also in my description if you go there you'll also find links to my equipment and all sorts of affiliate links and if you want to support the channel at no cost to you and you're planning on buying anything from Amazon or Agena Astro or First Lag Optics or High Point Scientific, if you do so using my links below, it will help me out and it is much appreciated. On the topic of helping the channel, if you can take a second to click the like button, it really helps the video out. And if you're new to the channel, you could also consider subscribing. In which case, welcome to the channel. And also leave a comment to let me know what you think, how much effect, effect or impact that primary mirror mask had. Obviously, you probably got a hint from the title and the video thumbnail, but hey, whatever, leaving a comment also helps a lot. If you want to help me even more, by the way, you can join my channel as a member using the join button next to the subscribe button or join my channel as a paid Patreon member. And you guys, you know it, you make the channel possible. This channel wouldn't exist without you and I am deeply thankful. Anyway, let's get going. What happened? I installed the uh, primary mirror mask and yes, the flares got better. But, and yes, there is a but, those like slightly more enhanced flares that I had noticed in my initial review, they stayed. They were still there and because the other flares were gone from the star, they became more noticeable. <laughs> so in a way, my primary mirror mask had uh, a detrimental effect by having a positive effect. That, that's how things work in astrophotography. You cannot do an enhancement without messing some, something else at the same time. <laughs> Oh man, what a hobby we have, guys. We love punishment, don't we? <laughs> so it actually got worse. 
and I'll show you the results uh, inside. Um, and I noticed that the flare is actually pointing outwards, all, not always a constant di direction, which should disqualify any like mirror clip as a source or even any even unevenness or anything intruding into the light pass as a, as a culprit. Maybe a reflection issue, I thought. So, because it's possibly a reflection issue, and this is something that I hadn't noticed and therefore not mentioned in my review, the uh, spider that holds the secondary mirror here, it's painted in bright red, including on the inside. So, I took my Musso black paint, which is a great non-reflective paint. I'll have a link down in the description if you're interested in getting some for yourself. And I pointed the back of the spider black, only the back. I didn't want to do uh, much more than that. So that aesthetic, aesthetic like in appearance, in, so that in outward appearance, the telescope is basically the same, but inside we should get less reflection. And the result is that it did absolutely nothing. I saw no change whatsoever at all. <laughs> so yeah, that was not very effective. So in other words, the problem is still there. And I'm wondering what could be the source. It seems to imply some kind of internal tube re reflections, but I look inside and it's dark. I don't see any source of reflection. So I'm wondering, should I simply have a lens hood effectively? And that should help avoid stray light entering into the tube, which should make sense with the fact that the spider is so close to the opening of the Newtonian. This is probably what I'll do next. And if it works, I'll feature it in the video. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. But anyway, quick update here. And let's go inside to look at the results and how the flares look like so that you are fully aware of my issue before you buy the telescope. Now I asked Apertura for comment on this and they told me they haven't seen that in the samples of the, the scopes that they've tested under the stars, but I urged them to really look into it because if it happens in other telescopes, it's a bad thing as this is a drawback for this telescope that is otherwise really, really good. Anyway, enough talking, let's go inside, see how it looks like. Okay, so how does this issue of those like flare from bright stars look like on the uh, final image? Now, there is one thing that I noticed while I was looking at the final image is that the star in the uh, center are oblong as if I had poor tracking, but I actually had great tracking via off-axis guider. So I also looked at an individual frame. You can see the same issue with the individual frame. But if I go to like the, the right side of the frame and even like in the corner of the frame, then suddenly my stars are round. So I suspect that I have some miscolumation going on and that could be exacerbating the issue and maybe even causing it to some extent. Let me know what you think. Maybe my collimation simply isn't good enough at this stage. And this will be my next step, probably. Uh, try to reclimate the sco scope, do another test and see what happens. I have noticed though that when I put a bright star at the center of the frame, I don't see the issue at all. So I, I don't think it's collimation. That said, going back to the uh, overall image, you can see in this one, the spike, is the flare is kind of going towards the top as a triangle on this star. If I go to uh, this star there, suddenly the flare is going outwards towards the corner. Also, my, my collimation is really bad. Look at that. Um, then if I go to this star, then the flare is pointing towards the right. If I go to uh, this one at the bottom, uh, it's, the flare is less visible. Uh, I can't say anything conclusively, but it seems to be pointed towards the bottom right. Um, another bright star, this one. Yeah, same story, but it does look like it's pointing towards the bottom left. And then that bright star here, definitely the flare is pointing towards the left. So it seems to be pointing to the outside edge of the frame. And I have no idea what the cause really is, which is somewhat frustrating. So obviously my next step is to be doing collimation better. I mean, I had been messing with my dual scope Franken scope and I assume I bumped the, the, the scope of collimation. So that's on me, right? And I'll be able to, to make that better. But still, uh, I, I don't think this will enhance the problem. So maybe the next step after that would be to blacken the edges of the secondary mirror. This is something else I hadn't really noticed during my initial review. 
and something that the uh, Skywatcher Quattro 150p actually got better because the secondary mirror there was already, the edges were already blackened as I recall when I received it. So I'll probably try that with hopefully without like staining the uh, second mirror uh, with paint. The good news though if, is if that happens, Musso paint is actually really easy to remove with water. So we should still not have an issue. Still, it's like uh, fingers crossed that I don't do something weird. But I really would like to hear your thoughts. What do you think are the most likely uh, causes for this kind of issue? Let me know down in the comments because I'm really puzzled. I mean, overall, I'm still extremely satisfied with the Carbon Star Telescope. But I feel this is not so something that should be happening with a mirror mask on. Uh, on the telescope at such a price. So this video also serves as a follow-up slash warning based on the initial review. But again, let me know if you have suggestions because I'd love to see what you think. And let me know also if, you know, blackening the edge of the secondary mirror is not gonna help because that's something I want to avoid doing at all if possible. While you're going to comment, you know, like the video, takes a second, really helps the channel out. And if you're new, you could consider subscribing. Uh, and in which case, welcome to the channel. But more important than all of that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.